Every morning in the wild, a gazelle awakens. One thing is for sure for the gazelle that day, as every other, she must run faster than the fastest lion. If she cannot, she will be killed and eaten. Every morning, a lion awakens. For the lion too, one thing is certain. This day and every day, he must run faster than the slowest gazelle. Whether fate names you a gazelle or a lion is of no consequence. It is enough to know that with the rising of the sun, you must run, and you must run faster than the day before for the rest of your days, or you will die. We all have to run, run the race of life. In this game, the relentless winners have the best defenses. They might get out of trouble using supreme athletic feats. Or they will use extraordinary camouflage and lethal poison. Some stick to mesmerizing herding behavior. And others use cooperation and intelligence to survive. Many have vicious horns and hooves. From the frog to the hyena. From the zebra to the deer. These spectacular survivors use their finely honed defenses to win their race of life. Animals winning their race of life with the best defenses have learned how to conquer their ecological niche. Over countless generations, they have learned who their enemies are and how to defend themselves against them. Some need to protect themselves against the king of beasts on the plains of Africa. Others need to fight against enemies almost too small for the human eye to see and many need to avoid the lightning strike and deadly venom of an ambush. As all good sports coaches say, if your defense is flawless, then you can never lose a match. More animals live in this place than anywhere else on Earth. It's where the race of life is at its most intense. Millions of antelope, zebra, giraffe, rhino, and elephant graze on the great grassy plains of Africa, which means there are also vast numbers of predators. There may be a lot of prey, but there's ruthless competition to catch and keep it. The big cats get all the publicity, but there's one predator who's evolved a way to beat them all, the hyena. Hyenas might look like dogs, but they're more closely related to cats. They've been around for over 10 million years, and for good reason. These incredible animals have one extremely adapted ability. Hyenas are bone crushers. They are one of the few animals in the world who can eat large bones. This young female can smell something exciting. A highly tuned sense of smell will take her straight to the target. It's a wildebeest carcass, probably the leftovers from a lion hunt. There's not much meat left, but for the hyena, that's no problem. She will eat everything, skin, horns, and bones. 
Her massive jaws can crush with the power of a vice, and her unique large teeth will break bones with hardly any effort. This animal wins her race of life by gaining nutrition from food others leave behind. But that's not her only survival skill. Our hyena is part of a large extended family group called a clan. It is run by a hierarchy of dominant females. They mark and defend their territory. Hyena paste contains colonies of bacteria with a unique odor. Our female can recognize her territory through this familiar smell. Hyena clans are terrifyingly huge, up to 90 individuals. So when this lot launches an attack, there's no defense. The clan have brought down their prey. They will run and run until their prey is exhausted before they tear it apart. A lion wants a share. She's more than three times the size of a hyena. But the hyenas show no fear. The lion has no chance against a clan this size. Hyenas are the most fierce carnivore in Africa, with jaws and teeth to match. With defenses like this, no animal is going to beat them on their race of life. Hidden deep among the swamps, rivers, and lakes of the world is a little creature with a lot of character. He's excellent at defending himself, but he's not armed with massive teeth and claws. He's hard to see, but his sound echoes across our waterways. He spends most of his life in the water, but breathes air, and he can't fly or sprint. But when it comes to jumping, he's an animal superhero, the frog. Frogs are amphibians. They lay their eggs in water, and their young are born with gills. They come as small as a little fingernail, and as big as a man's foot. These distinctive animals have relatives all over the world, from the Arctic to the tropics. Frogs are spectacular winners in the race of life with 4,800 different species. But they are soft and small, so they are on the menu for many predators. But they have a secret weapon. It lies under their body, spring-loaded and ready for action. Their legs. Frogs' legs are perfectly evolved for spectacular feats. Their massive leg muscles make up a sixth of their total body weight. The Australian rocket frog has the greatest jump of all. A tree snake is keen to make a meal out of him. He can taste the smell of the frog with his tongue. The snake homes in. The frog kicks into action. The rocket frog can leap over two meters in one jump. That's 50 times his body size. Many of his leg and foot bones have become elongated for maximum springing power. His forelimb bones have been fused to cope with the impact of landing. Frogs have lungs, but they have a special trick for staying hidden beneath the surface of the river. They can extract oxygen from water by breathing through their skin. But it doesn't always work. A red-bellied black snake managed to strike in time. But the meal has one last line of defense. 
The frog's slippery skin makes him difficult to hold on to. Many frogs escape the jaws of death in this way, but not this one today. The snake has won, and despite his athletic prowess, this frog has lost his race of life. Despite our ever-growing cities, the forests of the Northern Hemisphere are still home to one of the largest herbivores on Earth. They are shy, but they will fight to protect their families. They range in size from a dainty 30 kilos to a magnificent 400. And all the males are powerfully armed. Deer. These grazing animals have evolved long, strong legs, so they beat the field in running, jumping, and swimming. But the attribute that makes these animals win their race of life is on their heads. Antlers. For most deer, only the males possess these impressive weapons. They shed and regrow them every year. Even the massive antlers of the moose must be replaced. They can be over two meters across, but they can be replaced in less than five months. Female moose select their mate based on the size of his antlers. Deep in the woods of North and South America lives a deer that's become a master of invisibility. The fawns are spotted to match the dappled spring sunshine. The white-tailed deer. Despite their big eyes, they can't see too well. Their greatest defense is their acute sense of smell. Of course, their impressive set of antlers. Like most deer, the females do not have antlers. They rely on the dominant male to protect them from attack. And, and this fawn is distressed. He's lost his mother. But she's not far away, and they are soon reunited. He will stay with his parents until he's a year old. His sister will stay with mum and dad for two years. White-tailed deer eat a huge range of berries, shoots, and vegetables. They can even manage toxic mushrooms and poison ivy. The doe can hear a rustle. The fawn is also alarmed, but he's exposed, away from the safety of the trees. A mountain lion is on the hunt. A wolf has also noticed the herd. The fawn runs to safety. Dad sounds the alarm. Rutting season for the elk. Stags must compete for a mate. The antlers on these elk can be over a meter long, so these fights for supremacy can get very serious. The stags with the biggest antlers and greatest strength will win, and for good reason. They will be needed later. The does have given birth. A wolf has picked up the scent of the elk. Fawns are well protected from predators by their camouflage. 
But if that fails, the dominant stag steps in. Those huge antlers are too much of a threat to the wolf. The young elk get another day to run their race of life. The grassy plains of Africa are a place of contrasts, where the equatorial sun creates bright light and dark shade. The hunters and the hunted make use of these patterns to hide. Almost every animal out here has evolved a coat for camouflage. Like an invisibility cloak, it allows big cats to stalk and small animals to stay out of sight. One animal has developed this camouflage to a more complex level. His color palette is not the forms and gold shades of most animals here. This animal defends himself by running a black and white race of life, the zebra. Zebras are part of the horse family, but unlike horses and donkeys, they have never been truly domesticated. This herd is mostly made up of many harems. One stallion and about six mares with their foals. The foals are dependent on their mothers for a year. A lone cheetah is looking for a meal. He's reluctant to take a healthy adult zebra. The cheetah is hoping for easier prey, perhaps an injured or older animal, or even better, a foal. This foal has lost his mother. His braying attracts the cheetah. The mother is not aware he's gone. The hyena has also picked up the sound. The foal instinctively knows he won't last long without the protection of the herd. His stripes are protecting him. They break up his outline so he blends in with the long grass. Will the herd notice he's gone before the predators find him? The mother is alerted. She doesn't waste any time. The foal is safely reunited with his family. Each zebra has a unique stripe pattern, so it's possible they recognize each other by sight. Zebra stripes are not merely camouflage. They serve at least three other defense functions. Predators always select a single animal before moving in for the kill. This lion is confused. When a herd moves around, the black and white lines create a kind of motion dazzle. It's difficult to pick out an individual. The lion gives up, for now. The powerful sun is reflected by the white stripes, but absorbed by the black ones. This contrast creates air currents along the zebra's body, keeping her cool. The most bizarre function of the stripes is to protect against insect bites. These grasslands are buzzing with horse flies and tsetse flies. But for some reason, fewer flies attack the zebras with the most stripes. But the stripes cannot protect the zebra from crocodiles. This harem needs to cross the river to follow the rains and find fresh grass. They've been spotted. The zebras have no choice. It's certain death by starvation or the risk of swimming with the crocs. The race of life is on. The croc has lost this time. Most of the herd lives to graze another season. But they are tired from the journey. One zebra doesn't make it today. Finally, the lions get their feed. The weakest animal has been taken down. She's now contributing to the survival of the lions. The stronger zebras will go on to raise their families and produce more animals running their race of life 
in startling stripes. The world of small creatures is seething with thousands of battles to stay alive. It's a world full of animals with many legs and many eyes. A place inhabited by carnivores with giant fangs and lethal venom. And there are always larger animals searching and waiting in the hope of finding a meal. One of these small creatures sends so much fear into us, there's even a phobia named after them. And they're so successful, we've found almost 50,000 species, and still counting. The spider. Spiders are arachnids. They all have eight legs, an external skeleton, and venomous fangs. This trapdoor spider would be a juicy meal for a bird or lizard, but he defends himself by hiding underground. It's also the perfect place for catching lunch. It could be any unsuspecting passerby, a beetle, a cricket, or a grasshopper. The spider lays out trip wires along the ground. He then hides and waits. He lightly touches the ends of the trip wires from inside his hole. If a passing bug trips on the wires, the spider will be alerted. A cricket has just had a feed of forest leaves. The spider knows something's out there. The cricket moves closer. The trip wires are tight and almost invisible. The cricket is now right on top of the trapdoor, completely unaware of the danger below. But the spider doesn't strike. The cricket moves away unharmed. By some miracle, he has failed to make contact with any of the tripwires. The spider has lost his race of life this time, but he's ready and waiting for the next unsuspecting victim. The most dangerous time for a predator is the fight to catch and kill her prey. Injuries caused by a struggling victim can be fatal. Spiders have mastered the art of defending themselves against injury in many mysterious ways. A flower, a petal moves. It's a crab spider. Like the trapdoor, she uses ambush to catch her prey. A lace-wing butterfly is looking for nectar. The crab spider is perfectly camouflaged. The butterfly sucks the sweet nectar in a last moment of bliss. The spider strikes. She will wait until the butterfly succumbs to her venom before she moves in for her meal. Some spiders will do more than just wait for their meal. This bolus spider is casting out a lure. She's laced the lure with a pheromone that's irresistible to moths. The spider can swing her bolas for up to 15 minutes. A minor moth approaches. He's done for. The spider further entangles the moth in silk and stores him nearby for mealtime. But spiders are just as vulnerable to spider attack as other insects. A mother redback protects her egg sac. She doesn't know there's an intruder in the nursery, a Porsche spider lying in wait. Within days, hundreds of spiderlings emerge. Despite their watchful mother, the Porsche spider wades in for a feast of newborn redbacks. Many young will lose their race of life before they know they're born. But enough will survive. The spider race of life is a game of numbers, skill, and excellent defenses. The 
arms race of the animal world has led to defenses of almost infinite variety. From the vice-like jaws of the hyena, to the gunshot speed of the frog. From the strong as steel silk of the spider, to the hypnotic patterns of the zebra, and the awesome antlers of the deer. Defense is the key to winning the race of life.